Hello students. Today we are dealing with chapter 29, the monetary system. Here we begin to examine the role of money in the economy. We discuss what money is, the various forms that money takes, how the banking system help create money, and how the government controls the quantity of money in circulation. So, let's get started by answering these questions. What assets are considered money? What are the functions of money, the types of money? What is the Federal Reserve? What role do banks play in the monetary system? How do banks create money? How does the Federal Reserve control money supply? So, what money is and why it is important? Without money, trade would require barter, which is the exchange of one good or service for another. It requires a double coincidence of wants. The unlikely occurrence that two people each have a good the other wants. Is very cumbersome. Waste of resources. People spend time searching for the others to trade with. And using money solves these problems. There are three functions of money. Number one, medium of exchange. Items that buyers give to sellers when they want to purchase goods and services. Number two, unit of account is a yardstick people use to post prices and record debts. Number three, store of value, item that uh, people can use to transfer purchasing power from, one from the present to the future. There are two kinds of money. One is commodity money and the other is fiat money. Commodity money takes the form of a commodity <clears throat> with intrinsic value. Examples are gold coins, cigarettes, uh, in the POW camps. Fiat money is money without intrinsic value. It's used as money because of government decree. An example is the US dollar. The money supply. The money supply or money stock is the quantity of money available in the economy. It, com it comprises currency, which is paper bills and coins in the hands of the non-bank public, and demand deposits, balances in bank accounts that depositors can access on demand by writing checks. M1 is a component of money supply. As of May 2016, we had $3.2 trillion in circulation. It is real currency, demand deposits, traveler's checks, and other checkable deposits. M2, a broader definition of money supply, $12.7 trillion as of May 16th. It comprises everything in M1, plus savings deposits, small time deposits, money market mutual funds, and a few minor categories. The distinction between M1 and M2 will often not matter when we talk about the money supply in this course. Central Bank and Monetary Policy. Central Bank is an institution that oversees the banking system and regulates the money supply. Monetary policy is setting of the money supply by policymakers in the Central Bank. The Federal Reserve or the Fed is the Central Bank of the United States. And it is the body responsible for conducting monetary policy. The Federal Reserve System consists of Board of Governors, 
which is seven members located in Washington, D.C., 12 regional federal reserve banks located around the United States, Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, includes the Board of Governors and Presidents of some of the regional federal banks. The FOMC decides monetary policy. Bank Reserves In a fractional reserve banking system, banks keep a fraction of deposits as reserves and use the rest to make loans. The Fed establishes reserve requirements, which is, reg is regulations on the minimum amount of reserves that banks must hold against deposits. Banks may hold more than this minimum if they wish. The reserve ratio, the fraction of deposits that banks hold as reserves, the total, it is calculated as total reserves as a percentage of total deposits. A T account can be used to illustrate this. A simplified accounting statement that shows banks' assets and liabilities. Here is First National Bank uh, with liabilities on the right-hand side, assets on the left-hand side. Bank liabilities include deposits and assets include reserves. And in this example, deposits are $100, reserves $10, and loans is $90 in this example. Notice that reserve ratio is 10 over 100, reserves over deposits, and that is 10%. Banks and money supply, an example. Suppose $100 of currency is in circulation. To determine banks' impact on money supply, we calculate the money supply in three different cases. Where a situation where there's no banking system. Number two, 100% reserve banking system. Banks hold 100% of deposits as reserves and make no loans. And number three, fractional reserve banking system. Case number one, there is no banking system. If the public is holding $100 as currency, and that is all the money supply out there. In case number two, 100% reserve banking system, the public deposits $100 at the First National Bank. First National Bank holds 100% of deposits as reserves. And uh, as you can see, $100 in deposits, on the liability side, $100 as reserves. On the asset side, there is no loans. So money supply is really currency, which is uh, currency plus deposits, which is zero plus 100 is 100. In a 100% reserve banking system, banks do not affect the size of money supply. Case number three is what fractional reserve banking system is. Here, the reserve ratio is 10%. First, National Bank loans about all but 10% of the deposits. As here, First National Bank has $100 in deposits, as $100 in reserves. Depositors have $100 um, and borrowers will have $90. In this case, the bank has given out all but 10%. So $90 has gone out as loans. Money supply, which is currency plus deposits, is 90 plus 100 is 190. Case number three, fractional reserve banking system. How did the money supply suddenly grow? The answer, when banks make money, they create money. Beg your pardon. When banks make loans, they create money. The borrower gets $90 in currency, an asset uh, counted in the money supply. $90 in new debt, a liability that does not have an offsetting effect on the money supply. A fractional reserve banking system creates money but not wealth.
it is important not to confuse money with wealth. Case number three. Fractional Reserve Banking System, the borrower deposits the $90 at Second National Bank. The fellow who borrowed that $90 deposits it at Second National Bank. So Second National Bank has $90 of deposits, $90 of reserves. That's the initial T account. The, the reserve ratio is 10%. Second National Bank will make a loan of $81. Fractional Reserve Banking System, second, uh, second National Bank's borrower deposits the $81 at Third National Bank. Third National Bank receives $81 and, and as a reserve of $81 and is ready to make a loan and makes 10% is reserves and 90% as loans. In this case, $72.90 is new loans. Case number three, fractional reserve banking system. The process continues and money is created with each new loan. Original deposit of 1,000, first national bank lending $90, second national bank lending $81, Third National Bank lending $72. Total money supply is $1,000. This process continues until it stops when the original uh, $100 is uh, gone into reserves. In this example, $100 of reserves generate $1,000 of money. The money multiplier. The formula for calculating money multiplier is 1 over reserve ratio. The amount of money the banking system generates with each dollar of reserves. In our example, reserve ratio is 10%. The money multiplier, which is 1 over R, is 10. That is 1 over 0.1, which is 10%, is 10. $100 of reserves creates $1,000. That is $100 times 10. Active learning one. When cleaning your apartment, you look under the sofa cushion and find a $50 bill and a half-eaten taco. You deposit the bill in your checking account. The Fed's reserve requirement is 20% of deposits. Number A, what is the maximum amount that the money supply could increase? Number B, what is the minimum amount that the money supply could increase? You deposit $50 in your checking account. Uh, the maximum amount that the money supply could increase if the bank holds no excess reserves, then the, the money multiplier is 1 over reserve ratio, which is 1 over 0.2, which is 5. The maximum possible increase in deposit is 5 times 50, which is 250. But money supply also includes currency, which falls by 50. Hence, the maximum increase in money supply is $200. Um, number B, what is the minimum amount that uh, the money supply could increase? Zero. If the bank makes no, lo no loans from your deposit, currency falls by 50, deposits increase by 50, money supply does not change. More realistic balance sheet assets. Besides reserves and loans, banks also hold securities. Liabilities. Besides deposits, bank or banks also hold, uh, uh, obtain funds from issuing debt and equity. Bank capital. The resources a bank obtains by issuing equity to its owners. Also, bank assets minus bank liabilities gives you bank capital. Capital requirement. 
a government regulation that specifies a minimum amount of capital intended to ensure banks will be able to pay off depositors and debt and debts. Leverage. Leverage is the use of borrowed funds to supplement existing funds for investment purposes. Leverage ratio, the ratio of assets to bank capital. Uh, more realistic national bank would have uh, the, on the liability side would have deposits of 800, debt of 150, capital 50. On the asset side, it would have reserves 200, loans 700, securities 100. In this example, the leverage ratio is 1000 divided over 50, which is 20. 1000 is the total of assets, that is the leverage ratio, assets over capital. So 1000 divided by 50, which is the capital. So the leverage ratio for this bank is 20. Interpretation. For every $20 in assets, $1 is from the bank's owners, $19 is financed with borrowed money. A very highly leveraged business. Leverage amplifies profits and losses. In our example, suppose bank assets appreciate by 5% from 1000 to 1050 this increases bank capital from 50 to 100, doubling owner's equity. Instead, if the bank assets decrease by 5%, bank capital would fall from 50 to zero. If the bank assets decrease more than 5%, bank capital is negative and the bank is insolvent. So leverage cuts both ways. Leverage and the financial crisis. The financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, banks suffered losses on mortgage loans and mortgage-backed securities due to widespread defaults. Many banks became insolvent. In the, in the United States, 27 banks failed during 2000 to 2007 period. During 2008-9, 166 banks failed. Many other banks found themselves with too little capital, responded by reducing lending and causing credit crunch. How did the government respond? To ease the credit crunch, the Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury injected hundreds of billions of dollars worth of capital into the banking system. This unusual policy temporarily made United States taxpayers part owners of many banks. The policy succeeded in recapitalizing the banking system and helped restore lending to normal levels in 2009. Fed's tools of monetary control. Earlier we learned that money supply is equal to money multiplier times bank reserves. The Fed can change the money supply by changing bank reserves or changing the money multiplier. Open market operations, which is the purchase and sale of U.S. government bonds by the Fed. To increase bank reserves, and money supply, the Fed buys a government bond from a bank, pays by depositing new reserves in that bank's reserves account. With more reserves, the bank can make more loans, increasing money supply. The Fed makes loans to banks, increasing their reserves. Traditional method, which was adjusting the discount rate, in, which is the interest discount rate is really the interest rate on loans the Fed makes to banks to influence the amount of reserves banks borrow. The new tool is called term auction facility. The Fed chooses the quantity of reserves it will loan, then banks bid against each other for these loans. 
The more banks borrow, the more reserves they have for funding new loans and increasing money supply. How the Fed influences reserve ratio. The Fed sets reserve requirements. As regulations on the minimum amount of reserves banks must hold against deposits. Reducing reserve requirements would lower the reserve ratio and increase the money multiplier. Since October 2008, the Fed has paid interest on reserves banks keep in account at the Fed. Raising this interest rate would increase the reserve ratio and lower the money multiplier. Problems controlling money supply. The Fed does not control the amount of money that households choose to hold as deposits in banks and the amount that banks choose to lend. Yet the Fed can compensate for household and bank behavior to retain fairly precise control over the money supply. Case study, bank runs and money supply. A run on banks, when people suspect their bank are in trouble, they may run to the bank to withdraw their funds, holding more currency and less deposits. Under fractional reserve banking system, banks don't have enough reserves to pay off all depositors, hence banks may have to close. Also, banks may make fewer loans and hold more reserves to satisfy depositors. These events increase reserves, re reverse the process of, mo of money creation, causes money supply to fall. During 1929 to 1933, a wave of bank runs and bank closings caused money supply to fall by 28%. Many economists believe this contributed to the severity of the Great Depression. Since then, federal deposit insurance helped prevent bank runs in the U.S. 2007 bank run in the U.K., uh, affected Northern Rock Bank, which was eventually taken over by the British government. The federal funds rate. The federal funds rate is the interest rate at which banks make overnight loans to each other. Lender has excess reserves. Borrower needs excess reserve. Then they they lend from each other. A change in federal funds rate cause changes in other rates and make a big impact on the economy. It's the Federal Reserve that controls the federal funds rate. Monetary policy and the federal funds rate. The federal, the federal funds market has a traditional demand and supply, quantity of federal funds on the horizontal, and the federal funds rate on the vertical starts out with equilibrium a rate of 1.5%. Uh, to raise federal funds rate, Fed sells government bonds. This removes reserves from the banking system, reduces supply of money. The left shift of the supply curve reduces the supply of money, and this causes federal funds rates to rise, in this case, from one 0.5% to 1.75%. Summary. Money serves three functions, medium of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. There are two types of money. Commodity money has intrinsic value. Fiat money does not have intrinsic value. The US uses fiat money, which includes currency, and various types of bank deposits. In a fractional reserve banking system, banks create money when they make loans. Bank reserves have a multiply effect on the money supply. Because banks are highly leveraged, a small change in the value of the bank's assets causes a large change in bank's capital. 
to protect depositors from bank insolvency, regulators impose minimum capital requirements. The Federal Reserve is the central bank of the United States. The Fed is responsible for regulating the monetary system. The Fed controls the money supply mainly through open market operations. Purchasing government bonds increases the money supply. Selling government bonds decreases money supply. In recent years, the Fed has set monetary policy by choosing a target for the federal funds rate. That's the end of this lecture.